Good morning, Knicks Nation. Today is Thursday. It is the 29th day of June, 2023. I hope you're all safe and healthy today. I hope your family's safe and healthy and that the needs of you and your family in terms of food, shelter, clothing, as well as health are being met today. Blessings upon those that work in the healthcare field who along with the first responders are every day saving lives and those that pick up garbage for us to keep places clean and disease free, as well as those that do the humble work of making deliveries for our convenience. Double blessings upon the men and women that are out here trying to help rescue, deliver, and recover the teenagers and children who are the unfortunate victims of child molestation and pedophilia, the victims also of pornography and child pornography, the victims of prostitution and child prostitution, human trafficking and sex slavery. Double curses on the perpetrators of all these things, Double curses on those who profit from these things. And double curses on the perverts who create the demand of which all of these other previous perverts I mentioned provide supply. Finally, blessings, double blessings on the homeless. Nearly 600,000 men, women, and mostly children on the streets of the United States of America and millions around the world in similar or worse conditions. Blessings upon them. Double blessings for theirs is the kingdom. So, it appears there's a lot of talk about Dante DiVincenzo. Um, I can understand the fit. We're talking about Villanova with Jalen Brunson, with Josh Hart, and now you're, it's a natural to be wanting all three there. Um, Dante DiVincenzo is a solid player. He's not a superstar, but he's a solid player. Um, he has proven himself to be a championship piece, both at Villanova in his performance in the title game, as well as for the Milwaukee Bucks. And then this year, he was a big piece for Golden State, though they did not go all the way. So he has proven himself to be a championship piece off the bench for a, a, a title contending team, of which I consider the Knicks that now. The problem I have is twofold. Number one problem, well, and it's not in this order, but the first thing is, when you're dealing with 6'4 John D. G. Vincenzo, 6'3 Emmanuel Quickly, and 6'4 Josh Hart, you are obviously undersized. Now, you can run. You can play fast and run and, and try to get more creative, especially as a second unit. Um, but you're, you're undersized, undersized uh, on the wing and in the point guard at that, at that situation. You would be dependent on Dante D. Vincenzo to play high-level defense. Uh, the thing is, some of y'all got upset when I said that he's a solid defender. He is not a high-level defender. He's not on the level of Josh Hart, Quentin Grimes, or Deuce McBride. He's a good defender. He's not as bad as, as Jalen Brunson. So it's questionable. Um, the thing is about him is he's a big-time, big-game player. He is. He shows up. He's one of those guys that shows up in the big game. He doesn't flinch with the pressure. That's why he's worth his weight. The pro other problem I have, though, is if you're going to bring in a Dante DiVincenzo, you are going to lose an Obi top. It's very simple. OK, and I favor Obi. That's that's the problem I have. I and this is just me. The Knicks may not feel that way, but I favor Obi Toppin more than Dante DiVincenzo. And why do I say it's Obi or Dante? You already have a nine man rotation. The Knicks we're receiving multiple calls, according to Ian Begley, on Deuce McBride. Teams are interested in him. Not only that, but you've heard other people like Jeff and Gundy say he's going to be a player. So the Knicks want him and they want to keep him. And they just you know, opted his exercise his option for $1.8, $1.9 million. They now to see what they have. So I expect a closer to a 10-man rotation this year because of Deuce. Which means you got a full nine-man rotation and you got Deuce. There's no room for another player unless you remove a player. Now, in terms of players being removed, let's eliminate a couple of players. We're talking about bench piece right now because we're talking about Dante DiVincenzo. So we're not talking about the starters. You're talking about either when well, you're not removing Josh Hart. He's going to be re-signed. Okay? You're not removing Isaiah Hartenstein because you're not removing a seven-foot guy for a six-four guy. So that leaves Emmanuel quickly and Obi Toppin. Obi Toppin. Oh, first, let's start Emmanuel quickly. First of all, Emmanuel quickly. <laughs> first of all, I am not losing Emmanuel quickly to get Dante DiVincenzo. Nobody is. They're in two different worlds. Emmanuel quickly is several notches better basketball player than Dante DiVincenzo is. I mean, several notches. So put it this way. They're talking about paying Emmanuel quickly $80 million 
And I'm not even sure they're going to give Dante DiVincenzo the full mid-level exception. That's the difference in what we're talking about in terms of talent, okay? So there's no, I'm not losing IQ to get Dante. If you're going to lose IQ, it will be part of a bigger package to bring back a bigger, bigger time player. For example, if you were to believe, for example, that OB and an OG and an OB is that type of player, I'm not saying he is or he isn't, but if you were, and the Knicks were going to trade for him, you'd be talking about Emmanuel Quickly and RJ Barrett going to Toronto. Probably for OG and an OB in a matching salary of a bench piece, probably a guy like Boucher. You get Chris Boucher and OG and an OB for Emmanuel Quickly and uh, RJ Barrett. So you're replace, replacing a bench piece with a bench piece. You're replacing a starter with a starter. That's how that would go. By the way, you all know OG just fired Clutch Sports and, and, and hired CAA. We're going to see what happens here, but that's going to be very interesting. So uh, as a side note, but that's the circumstance under which Emmanuel Quickly would be traded. He's not going to be traded you know, like with Obi, you're not going to get that kind of package. Again, you're going to probably include Evan Fournier to move salary, um, but you're not going to get that type of return as you would get for IQ. So, you're really talking about Obi Thompson. And let's break this down for you. The reason the Knicks would get the $12.4 million mid-level non-taxpayer exception is because... Derek Rose's salary drops and because and because Josh Hart would opt in because the 12.9 million is included in in their total salary the 12.9 million for Josh Hart as long as he doesn't opt out it's included and so that's why there's a delay in him deciding whether to opt out or opt in they're trying to figure out a deal for Obi Toppin why do I say that if he opts in that is Josh Hart. The $12.9 million is his salary for next season. He'll sign an extension that will take place after next season. So that new salary won't be on his on the next books. Then they can sign Dante DiVincenzo to the mid-level exception. Somewhere the max of that is $12.4 million. I don't think he would get that max, but that's what they would look to do. Then they would send Obi out in a trade. If Josh Hart opts out, this is what I'm hoping he does. If he opts out, he's now going to get somewhere between 16 and 18 million dollars. The Knicks would not be trading Obi Toppin because they would not have the full 12 million, uh, 12 million dollar exception. So if Josh Hart opts out, Obi is staying. If Josh Hart opts in, Obi is being moved. It's very simple. Okay? We will know between now on the 29th of June and tomorrow, the 30th of June. We will know. That is why there's a delay in whether Josh and they've, they've agreed, the Knicks and Josh have agreed to extend the time until tomorrow because they're trying to decide a couple of things and they're tied together. Are they going to give Obi more minutes? If not, they need to make a deal to get something for Obi. And if so, they need to get Dante DiVincenzo in here. And if that's going to happen, they need Josh Hart to opt in. For Josh Hart, it means, think of for yourself, you get, let's call it $13 million. A lot of money, right? So you're getting $13 million this year, or you can get upwards of $18 million this year. What do you want? Now, you're willing to take the 13 if you can get 16 to 18 in the future to get your buddy in here. So that's what we're dealing with. So it's going to be either Obi or Dante. That's what it comes down to. And that's assuming. So look, there's two other teams interested in Dante DiVincenzo that have the mid-level exception of 12.4 million. Okay? The question is, Who's going to offer him the most of that? See, you don't have to offer him the whole. You, it's up to twelve point four million. You could offer him nine million. You could offer him ten million. You don't have to offer him the whole ten point twelve point four. In my view, his real worth as a bench piece is between nine and ten million dollars a year. So I would say something like three years, thirty-two million for Dante Divincenzo. Okay, thirty-one, thirty-two million, somewhere like that. When you're talking about raises every year, so. That's what I would offer him. 
but some team out there might offer him the full 12.4. Or the Knicks might be forced to do that. So there's that element as well. Is there somebody else out there, Minnesota, or somebody that's saying, well, listen, we're going to give you the full, we're going to give you three years or four years, $48 million, all guaranteed. Well, guess what? He's going to be a Timberwolf. Because the Knicks ain't going to do that. Okay? So we're going to see, this is, there's a lot of moving parts, but the base, baseline of this is if Josh Hart opts out, Obi stays a Nick. If Josh Hart opts in, DiVincenzo becomes a Nick and Obi is moved. That's how it's going to work. Okay? If J there is a possibility that Josh Hart will opt in and then DiVincenzo decides, I'm still going to Minnesota, they're giving me more money, bro. Then they, they, that kind of throws things off. But basically, if you see uh, Josh Hart opt out, forget DiVincenzo, Obi is staying. If you see Josh Hart opt in, you're probably going to lose Obi and you're going to get DiVincenzo. That's how this is going to work. Okay. And as far as Emmanuel quickly, uh, you know, or Obi, if you know if they're going to move Obi, you're going to get one of Julius Randle or R.J. Barrett being moved. If they're moving Emmanuel quickly, I can guarantee you. One of those other gentlemen in the starting lineup is being moved. If they're moving Obi, it's you don't know because Obi's a four, so they're keeping Randall. They would move Obi with RJ if they were going to get a big time player. You know, unfortunately, I don't see anybody out there, honestly, that I would want to break up my young my youngins. I wouldn't be sending them out for. I wouldn't be doing this for. Um, I'm not sending Obi and RJ out. For Levine, I'm not doing it. Okay, if the Knicks want to do that, maybe, but I'm not. I'm not doing it. Okay, I'm not doing it. I would send um, Randall out for KP. Y'all know that, but that ain't happening. So that's over with. So I'm, and I'm definitely, and it's not Tom Thibodeau, and it's not the uh, the Don's rule to be bringing in forty seven million dollars for two years of it's ninety something million dollars for two years. Of PG thirteen, he's they're not going to do that. Okay, that's not he's not available enough. Okay, that's why I talked yesterday. The title of the video yesterday was "What Would Tibbs Do?" And the number one thing Tibbs needs is availability, which is why I went through the list of available players that are the most available players in the NBA. People that don't miss no games or miss very few games. That's what Tibbs likes, along with of course the defense, the rebounding, you know that kind of stuff. But he, he needs availability. He needs you to be there. He really does not like when he calls upon you and you're not available. So 70 games a year is probably, you know, he'll he'll deal with a 12-game reference or whatever, but you start missing 14, 15, 16, 20 games, he's not going to like that. He's just not going to like that. So he's not, especially you talking about paying all that money for him. So it's not going to happen. The PG-13 thing is out. And then, and, and I would really... I mean, there is a possibility of Levine. He's available. He's been for the last few years available. High level, obviously talented offensive player. But I would not want to give up RJ and OB for him. I just wouldn't do it. So to me, I'm running it back. But the key thing here that I wanted to bring out today is what's Josh Hart going to do? Because that's going to tell you everything. Josh Hart opts in. DiVincenzo has become Nick. Josh Hart out opts out, the event is not becoming a Nick and we're keeping Obi. That's generally, look for that because this is going to be in the next 12, 16 hours. You're going to see this, okay? So, you know, I mean, 12 to 24 hours. Yeah, you're going to see between 12 and 24 hours. This is going to happen between today and tomorrow. See, so if the event becomes a Nick, if Hart opts in and Obi is the next Nick at that point, Obi stays a Nick, then that means also they're committed to giving him more minutes if the if Josh Hart opts out, because now he's gonna get his money this year, so we'll see what happens. Um, this is gonna be tricky. I of course my my brother is to keep my team, run it back. We got a nice team. I don't want to tear it up for none of this yet. Not like this. Mm -mm. So, but the key thing is, what does Tibbs want? What does the Don want? We're gonna find out. Y'all enjoy your Thursday. Shalom.